Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Admiral Franchetti. Congratulations on your nomination. Jim, Isabel, good to have you here today. So for nine months, the senator from Alabama has personally blocked the Senate from approving promotions for more than 300 military leaders. We are missing Navy commanders in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. The Secretary of the Navy has said the impact of these holds is, quote, playing Russian roulette with the very lives of our service members. And now, with Admiral Gilday's retirement, the Navy has no confirmed chief of naval operations. But the price our nation will pay for the reckless behavior of Senator Tuberville will reach far into the future. Admiral Franchetti, the Navy, like most of the services, is always competing for the best leaders of tomorrow. So how important is a pipeline like the Naval Academy for recruiting those leaders of tomorrow? Senator Warren, it was a pleasure to meet you the other day. Uh, you know, as we uh, look right now, as our Navy is facing challenges all around the globe, threats uh, from our adversaries, we want to have the right people with the right level of experience uh, in those positions. Uh, and as the, we continue to uh, not have the confirmed people uh, that we've nominated with that experience, uh, we're going to continue to see uh, an erosion of readiness. As far as the Naval Academy goes, it, it is uh, an amazing uh, place. I had a chance to serve there as a battalion officer. Uh, and, you know, they bring together uh, the best and brightest talent from all across America that are willing to serve our nation. Uh, and it, they really come out and they do a great job. So whether they serve for their original commitment or they serve for 30 years, I'm very proud of all of our midshipmen at the Naval Academy. Uh, as well as our midshipmen across our other commissioning uh, sources in OCS. And I take it you're saying this is a part of the leadership pipeline for the Navy. It is. So one of the people held up by Senator Tuberville is Rear Admiral Davids, who would be the first female superintendent of the Naval Academy. Seeing someone like her at the helm will inspire other people who might not otherwise pursue a career in the Navy. Senator Tuberville likes to talk about how we're in a recruiting crisis. But for the first time in 60 years, the Naval Academy started the school year without a confirmed superintendent. And every young person at the Naval Academy, every young person who is thinking right now uh, about applying to the Academy, and every young person anywhere in the Navy must confront head on the fact that Senator Tuberville has turned both the Navy and the Naval Academy into one more political football. The Senator's actions are damaging our military's recruiting, and we will be paying a price for that for decades to come. So let me ask you about another impact from these holds. Let me ask about families. Admiral Franchetti, you, have you heard anything about the impact of these holds on Navy families? Uh, yes, I think our Navy families are dealing with a lot of uncertainty. We ask a lot of our families to move, uproot, find new schools, find new jobs for spouses. And I have heard a lot of concerns uh, from our families that they are having difficulty navigating that space right now. All right. And one last question, and this one is about the promotion system. The 300 plus holds on the top ranks has an impact on everyone who is one level down, two levels down who can't move into a spot that has been vacated. Admiral Franchetti, the senator from Alabama, is treating these holds as a minor inconvenience. But the servicers are telling me that even after the holds are lifted, the promotion system will be tangled up for months or years to come. So what is your best estimate of how long it will take the Navy's promotion system to recover? Senator, I think just at the three-star level, it would take about three to four months to move all of the people around, but it will take years to recover from the promotion, uh, if confirmed, for the promotion delays that we would see forward. 
So years to come, our military experts project China wants to be able to take Taiwan by 2027, and we'll still be trying to repair the damage inflicted by these holds. The Republicans' failure to end this blockade makes it clear they don't care about our leaders. They don't care about the families who have served their country honorably for decades. It is hard to imagine a bigger propaganda win for our enemies. We need this hold to stop, and we need it to stop now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.